Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And this is Pete J. And we're here in back home in sunny Phoenix, Arizona for just one home game against the California Gold Coats. And right now, uh, little, we've got some, some brand new studio action going on here in Arizona on the field. <laughs> and um, that means uh, yeah, we got some new gear. It's about 90% finished. I'll show a little tour once it's all once it's all good and done. But um, until then, there may be a little bit a little bit we have to work on with the audio, with the acoustics and stuff like that. But uh, right now, the booth is looking pretty good. Yes, it is. It is. I'm very jealous. <laughs> Tom's done a, done a, a lot of work. It looks real good. Looks real good. Like I say, he's gonna have to you know fine tune it a little bit, get it locked in. But once he yeah. does, boy, that thing's gonna be sweet. Great. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Tell you about this game. Before we tell you about this game, we'll tell you about what's been happening so far. Six straight losses so far. We're, is this our longest losing streak or no? I think so. Um, two, four uh, at the beginning of the season. Yeah, this is the longest losing streak. We had one, like I said, we, we lost four in a row. Games four through um, seven. Uh, but then we beat the Saw Teeth to kind of come out of it. And, well, we need something like that now. We go into the last quarter of the season. If we want to make the playoffs, we got to turn them around. Um, one of the good things about the, the new studio situation here is I can be loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about the last game before we talk to you about this game. Uh, things started off at the bottom of the first. Sock the Song, who before this series hadn't been playing his best, played great against the Beatles the last two games. He's got a runner at third base uh, when he cranks this two run home run. Oh, the center field wall. Just over jumping Magic Moore, who probably could have caught it if he jumped a little, if he timed his jump better. And uh, they get right out into the lead at two zip. Um, things go for a little while longer. The Beavles keep trying to get the offense. They just never comes. In the bottom of the sixth, then Annabelle Stokes comes up with two outs and an 0-2 count. Places a bases loaded right field RBI just west of the, of the first base line. Uh, brings in three runs on the double, and it quickly makes it five zip. Well, not quickly, six innings in, make it five zip. Um, a herbivore. It was the top of the ninth. Bertha Banks with two on then, and Slamus out at third, or hits this one with Slamus gets out at third. Woodman scores the RBI, um, so they get they get one run on there, but it wasn't going to be enough. That again, the top of the ninth, Eliza Peck hits this grounder. Stewart. Or Stewart misses, it's caught at second. And oh, she gets caught at second base um, as the runners try to advance on the missed play. But that's the third out. The Beagles drop their six straight. Yada, yada. Here we are. Yes, sir. I'm not in a good spot here. We've dropped out of first place in the trade. Um, we've fallen a game and a half out of the wild card contention right now, the Heaters. Uh, have a hold of that spot with a record of 19 and 14 with a plus 20 run differential um, and then we got the overdogs uh, between us and the heaters so yeah uh, the uh, B Wolves have to find the offense which really has been missing all season long and I don't I don't understand why um, we lost a Laura Franco we brought in sturdy Woodman um, we thought we'd get offense out of him um, and and while he's he's got a good batting average, I, I don't think he's uh, he's got the RBIs to go with it. He's definitely not hitting the long ball like we thought we'd see out of him. Uh, same thing with Gina Torrens. We let her go and moved Freddie Knox into the uh, uh, the starting everyday second baseman. Um, over these past six games, poor uh, Freddie Knox is hitting point oh six seven. So he's he's struggling at the plate as well. Uh, brought Ham Slamis in to kind of back up Freddie Knox and uh, and uh, and uh, her uh, Hanley Dexteras. Um, and again, he's got a good batting average, but he's he's not really hitting the dingers like I thought he would. Um, although he has won over these six uh, these past six games, and again, he's got a really good average. He's hitting uh, 333 over these six games, but again, just no RBIs. I think everybody on the team, Tom. All their RBIs are down. Um, we talked about it last time. The, the uh, uh, Dexteris is leading the team in home runs with 10. Uh, the next person behind him is um, Buster Biggs with five. So 
Yeah. You know, you're talking about we're walking into the 35th game of the season, and our our biggest home run hitters only got 10, and the second the next one behind them's only got five. That's yeah. We've just just I don't know where the offense is going. I don't know where it is. Yeah, we and we need that those home run. We need some more home runs. One of the things you were talking, um, uh, uh, you know, Ham Slamus is that we brought him in for power. We were hoping he can get a few more home runs, and he's just got I think the two or something. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we hope those bats come alive and quick. Uh, before we start today's tonight's game today tonight, uh, it's going to be 16 games to tell you about. We started off with the Detroit Heaters. Down in Florida at the Water Bullets. Pete, go. All right. So the Heaters travel to take on the Water Bullets. It's a back and forth battle, but the Heaters will take that one three to two. The Freedom were in Fort Lauderdale to face the Freebooters. That's a lot of F's, and the Freedom take it five two. Sirloins take it on the front runners. Front runners will hold court and win that one four to nothing. Warbles at the wide loads two zip. Sandcats take it on the Jacks. It's back and forth. The Sandcats take off and win it five to three. Freebooters are at the Plant High San Diego. It's close game, but the Freebooters take it 5-4. Blowfish take it on the front runners. Roll here, they take that one 7-1. Freedom are at the Grapplers in the West Coast, and the Freedom took them 4-3. The Warblers travel to take on the Wide Loads. It's a back and forth battle again, a lot of those. And the Wide Loads are going to hold court and win at 7-5. Wide Loads then went to Detroit to face the Heaters, and they beat them 6-3. Thank you, Wide Loads. The yeah. Buzzards take it on the Wild Pigs. Wild Pigs with a big lead. Just making it bigger, and they hold on and win 16 to three. Wow, the Burners facing the Crocs, and the Burners take them 5-1. Outlaws take it on the Nemesis, and the Nemesis with a rare show of power, 7-4. Gold Coats over Togs, Gold Coats three zip. Moose take it on the Arctics. The Moose with a wide lead, take it six to two. Sirloins in the hot corners, all St. Louis. Sirloins win it 2-1 in the Battle of St. Louis. That's a lot. And that brings us to this current situation. Pete, Pioneer Conference, Pathfinder Division, go! The <laughs> Pathfinder Division, Burners sit atop the Pathfinder Division with a record of 19 and 15. Um, they have a two-game lead over the second-place Moose, uh, who are uh, sitting in second place with a record of 17 and 17. As a matter of fact, the Burners just beat the Moose, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I called that game. I'm not... <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, they go so quick. I um, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's really tough. The Uncharted Division and the Oakland Outlaws are in first place, but they share it with the San Diego Platypie. Both teams are 22 and 12, and both teams have a five-game lead against the 500 Wild Pigs, who are 17 and 17. Down in the Journey Division, the Freebooters with a tw- uh, with a record of 25 and 10 finally, finally rack up their <laughs> the first double-digit loss. <laughs> Um, they have a stranglehold on first place in the Journey Division. They have a nine-game lead over the second-place Grapplers, who are in second place with a record of 16 and 19. Freebooters with a league-best plus 59 run differential. Wow, yeah. Well, Phoenix Sandcats, better luck next year, I think. Explore Conference Seafair Division. These Gold Coats who are coming in tonight to play us are, of course, the first-place team. They're 21 and 13. They're formidable with a plus 19 run differential. They have a full game and a half lead ahead of the second place team. It's the Detroit Heaters, who are 20 and 15. In our very own trade division, the Water Bullets sit atop the trade with a record of 18. No, actually, it's a three way tie. I'm sorry. Three way tie for first place. Water Bullets, B Wolves, and Herbisaurs all sit atop the trade division with records of 18 and 16. Water Bullets with a plus 10 riff run differential, the Bee Wolves with a plus 1, and then the Herbisaurs with a minus 8, even coming off of a two-game win over the, the Bee Wolves. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so that's it. So <laughs> In second place, um, the Sirloins with a record of 17 and 18. They're a game and a half out of first place, and uh, they, are, they are a negative 10 run differential. Yeah, the Nemesis finally got their 10th win <laughs> at this point yep. on the opposite. But this, I mean, the trade division is really, other than Nemesis, it's kind of up for grabs. And Sirloin's really a game and a half out. It's anybody's it's anybody's yeah. guess. But it's probably going to be the only team making it to the playoffs is probably going to be the one who takes that first place. I think the, I think you're going to see the, um, you know, the, the uh, wild card come out of either the Seafair or the Curiosity Division. To finish things. I agree. To finish things off the Curiosity Division, right now it's the San Jose Saw Teeth, uh, who are 21-15. They have a full two-and-a-half game lead ahead of the New York Wide Loads, who are not yet out of it at 19-18. And, and that's going to bring us to today's game. 
game 35 of 44. It's the 21 and 13 Gold Coats against the 18 and 16 B Wolves. Both teams known as rotation aces, but looking at it there, the uh, Gold Coats have great defense, good speed, and a good bullpen and good contact. Really, they're, they're a pretty well balanced team. They're going to put their right hander starter, Israel Herring, on the mound. He's mostly known for his accuracy. Those are pretty accurate. He's got good junk. Uh, he's not totally, uh, he doesn't throw very hard though. He's got a 101 record this season thus far, a 4.60 ERA and a 1.49 whip. That's right. And backing him up is the uh, is the shortstop Hooper. She's got uh, better than average power, connectivity, and speed. She's locked in, so she's outperforming those stats. She's hitting 276 with five home runs on the season. She's also uh, he's also got Stefan Ballard out there in right field. He's also locked in. He's got less than average power, but very good ability to connect and and uh, better than average speed on the base pass. He's hitting 356 with five home runs, and then Nielsen, the left fielder, with uh, good power. About average ability to connect better than average speed on a base pass, but he's only hitting 128 with two home runs, Todd. Yeah, and I think I think if, if memory serves correct, uh, Stephen Ballard or Stephen Ballard, um, he he plays pretty well against the Beavers in general. So we got to keep an eye, one eye right on that guy. Our right yes, hitter sir. on the mound is going to be Fran Japani. We're hoping she could be the first starter to get a uh, a win after almost two full times through rotation. Fran Japani still. I think she's the top three for strikeouts this season. She's known mostly for her velocity. She's got good junk and she's accurate enough. She still has a winning record. I think she's our, I don't know, she's our only starter that has a winning record. Three and two, an amazing 1.90 ERA and a 0.88 whip. Fran Japani's in the top 10 overall players in the league at this point in the season. Yes, sir. And backing her up, notable players is going to be Sturdy Woodman. Woodman with better than average power, very good ability to connect, and, and the less than average speed on the base pass. He's locked in, so he's going to outperform those stats. He's hitting 374 with four home runs. Hanley Dexter is the shortstop, superstar shortstop, who came out hot. Mm -hmm. Seems to have cooled off just a little bit. He's got better than average power. He's got uh, very good ability to connect, very good speed on the base pass, hitting 445 with 10 home runs. And then Buster Biggs, the left fielder, with uh, – Good power, good ability to connect, and good speed. He's in 275 with five home runs. So, pretty, pretty good. Well, let's see what we're looking at for the the lineup. Assistant coach getting it right here. Looks like this. Handley Dex, no big surprise. He's going to start off at second base and bat first. Right behind him, Magic Moore, one of the two locked in players of the Beagles in center field. Magic Moore had a good, had actually one of the few Beagles to play well against the Herbosaurus. He's going to hopefully take it to uh, California today. He is going to be uh, at center field and left field. Buster Biggs batting third, batting fourth. Cleanup, the other locked in player for the Beagles, Sturdy Woodman. Sturdy Woodman hitting well up in the Emerald Diamond. He's going to hope to carry that forward today again at Red Rock Park, bringing the home fans something to cheer for. Steve Monster is going to bat fifth and play catcher. At third base, batting sixth, Bertha Banks batting seventh, Billy LaPointe in right field. Ham Slamis is going to play shortstop today for Dexterous, who's filling in for Freddie Knox, who's a little bit tense. Fran Japani is good at bat ninth and pitch, and she throws the forefinger, the two finger, the cut curveball, the slider, and the changeup. And welcome, Patriot Military Antiques fans today. They get the 50% off. There you go. Welcome in, folks. Got the got the uh, roof closed. Must be a hot one out there. Got the AC going. 74 degrees, room temperature. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's hope that'll bring home a winner for us. Oh, man. We need one. Yes, it's sir. It's been a long We've time get since up. we got a win in this park. That's true. We, we had a hor yeah, it was a horrible four-game homestand. The Gold Coats lineup's going to look like this. Ballard's going to lead off playing right field. Pineda in center field. Delgado at second base. Hooper at short. Nielsen in left field. Jacques Tan catching. French at third base. Noble at first. And Herring pitching and batting ninth. So as the B-Wolves take the field, Top of the first, Stefan Ballard, Dunk Pineda, and Pants Delgado going to take a first look at Fran Japani, who's bringing her 1.90 ERA to the, right to right the bump. Woo. Ballard is locked in and fit, hitting 356, five home runs, 18 RBIs on the season. Ballard locked in for the right field. Takes the first pitch for a, call, for a ball. Ball one. This game is underway. Swing and a miss, and Ballard was out in front of that one. Evens the count up at one ball and one strike. That one's popped up. 
foul territory. And Steve Monstor makes the catch. One down. Dunk Pineda, the center fielder's neutral, fit in 205 on the season. Three home runs, 17 RBIs. He'll be manning center field for the Gold Coats. Takes the first pitch, low ball one. One ball, no strikes to Dunk Pineda. That's in there for called strike, and now the count is evened up. A ball and a strike. Bases are empty for Pineda. Swing and a miss, and Pineda tried to catch up, but Japani let the bottom drop out of that one. One ball, two strikes, swing and a miss. And Fran Japani gets her first K victim of the day, and Pence Delgado goes down. I mean, Pence Delgado steps in, the second baseman. He's neutral and fit. Delgado hitting 310 with five home runs, 24, five RBIs. Fouls that one off along the third baseline. No balls in a strike. That one's fouled off along the third baseline into the stands. And now Delgado's in the hole. No balls, two strikes with two outs. That one's in the dirt. And Monstour keeps it in front of him. So one ball, two strikes now. Fouled off, pushes that foul along the uh, first baseline. So one ball, two strikes to Delgado, the Gold Coat's second baseman. That one's <laughs> fouled straight back. One ball, two strikes. Delgado making Japani throw some pitches here. Yeah. Fouls that one off. Japani up to 13 pitches now. Jeez. Fouls that one off. Make it 14. And it's still one ball, two strikes with two outs. That one's low. Ball two. Two, two, and two. The Pants Delgado, the Gold Coat second baseman. That's in there for a called third, and Delgado goes down on strike. So we're heading into the bottom of the first. Henley Dexteras, Magic Moore, and Buster Big is going to take a first look at Israel Herring, who's bringing his 4.60 ERA to the bump. Dexteras, the shortstop, neutral and fit, tough out, utility player. All right, we got to get uh, Herring to throw some pitches here. First pitch is a ball. We do the same to him they did to us. <laughs> Second one finally makes it in for a strike. We're tied up one piece. Safety off. Bottom of the first. It's underway as Hanley Dexter cracks that one right between the legs of the pitcher up in the center field. Makes his way to first base. Nice single, Dex. Yes, sir. So Hanley Dexter stand at first base. In steps Magic Moore, the center fielder. He's locked in and fit. Hitting 212 with two home runs, seven RBIs. First pitch to Magic Moore is in there for called strike. Strike one. That one's inside ball one. One ball, one strike with no outs. Ooh, that catches the high outside corner for a called second strike. And now it's one and two to Magic Moore. Magic Moore swing and a miss. And Moore is Herring's first victim of the day. Totally handcuffed. Herring really, really played him there. Uh, here's Buster Biggs up now. Dex is going for second. The pitch high, the throw too high as well, and Dex makes it out there to scoring position. Way to go, Handley. One out, one strike, pressure up. First pitch, second pitch misses high, we're going to one apiece. Tenth pitch by Herring. This is low for a ball. Good eye, Buster Biggs. Hitting 275. Now he gets two Ks, 2-2. Pete thought that was a ball, baby. Got a little ahead of that one, pulled it foul, first baseline. Still. Two piece, one out in the bottom of the first. There's a hard liner in a oh a jumping grab! Holy crap! The shortstop for the Golden Coast. I don't know how she got that thing. Did she throw a glove? <laughs> Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman, steps in, locked in and fit, hitting 374. Two outs now with a runner at second base. Takes the first pitch for a cult strike. Strike one. That one's low ball one. One ball, one strike with two outs. Dexterra is at second base. Swing and a miss. And Woodman's behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. He pushes that one off foul along the first baseline. Uh, There's a pop fly to Israel Herring at pit, on the pitcher's mound. He makes the catch for the third out. So we're heading to the second. Still no score. Haley Hooper, Peyton Nielsen, and Jacques Oftang going to take a first look at Japani, who threw 16 pitches, wrecked up two strikeouts in the first inning. Number Haley Hooper locked in. Hitting 276, five home runs, 14 RBIs, power hitter. Outfield going to fade back a little bit. we locked in. Haley Hooper. <laughs> Left hand batter's box. It's a hard one out in right field. Magic Moore's ranging over to get it. Makes the crab. Looks like he lost it for a second. He caught it at the warning track in center field. One pitch, one out. That's a good pace. 
Peyton Nielsen now, 128, two home runs, six RBIs, good contact hitter, even better power hitter, right hand batter's box. The left fielder oh, for the no. California Gold Coats checks at the first one's right in for strike, 0 1. Chapani spits something out. Number 40 gets a signal, winds and throws. Checks on that inside one, makes it a little bit inside ball. Here we throw our 20th pitch right now. Outside corner strike, 2 1 and 2. She's got uh, number 5 in a hole for the. Uh, is it 5? No. It's, oh, swing of a strike, 3, and it's a good strikeout by Fran Japani. We got a picture of that one here in, in the booth. <laughs> and that brings in Jacques Oftan. He is uh, he used to play for both Colorado teams for a while, Buzzards and then the Warblers. He's hitting 233 with two home runs and seven RBIs, and he checks the first pitch inside. It's a strike and a breaking pitch. Only on the count. Two outs, top of the second. Still no scores. Score. Still no hitter for Fran Japani. Shakov 10's looking a little bit tense. Watch that first one out. The second one outside. It misses. Ball one. One, one the count with two outs. Pop up third base line. Bertha Banks is running over to grab it in front of the wall, and she does right in front of the fans. So one, two, three. We're going to head into the bottom of the second. It's still no score. Steve Montstour, Bertha Banks, and Billy LeBoink in the grabs board and take a look at Israel Herring who threw 18 pitches in the first inning. He racked up one strikeout and gave up a hit. Steve Montstour, the catcher's neutral and fit. He's got power versus right-handed pitching. He's hitting 286. I like seeing Steve at the plate. Steve's got good power against these righties, as Pete said. First one misses high, ball one. 20th pitch by Herring. He oh, just God. makes that outside corner. We're even up one to piece safety off. Ooh, swing and miss the rising fastball inside. Now he's in a hole, one and two. That one misses low, good patience. Two apiece now. That one's low. Oh, hi, it's a line drive to the right field, but it's going to be right in the glove of Stefan Ballard, just short of the warning track for the first time. good. took it for a good ride, Pete. Yes, sir, Bertha Banks, a third baseman. She's neutral and fit, hitting 264 with two home runs, 12 RBIs, one out, bases loaded. That's on the ground to Delgado. He'll pick it up, make the throw to the first base. And get the out. So two quick outs and in steps Billy the Boink, the right fielder. Yeah, we gotta make him we gotta make a pitch, but he's throwing right in there. Billy likes to pitch his high, three and nine, one home run, twenty RBIs. That one was high, but too high. One no the count. That one's right in there, and that's a liner in right field, jumping miss onto the ground, and that's gonna be the second single for the B-Wolves. Way to go, Billy the Boink, because just hope it's not too too little too late. Yeah, it's typical B-Wolf baseball, a two-out single. Ham Slamma steps in. He's neutral. If it hitting 339 with two home runs, four RBIs. LeBoink does not have a lot of speed at first base. Not a threat to steal. That one's popped up into left center field. The center field is calling everybody off, and Pineda's going to make the catch for the third out. So we're going to head into the top of the third. Still no score. Messiah French, Flapjack Noble, and Israel Herring are going to come up and take a look at Japani, who's thrown 24 pitches with three strikeouts. Her ERA's dropped to 1.83. Messiah French, the third baseman, is neutral and fit hitting 323, four home runs, 18 RBIs. Japani is locked in in the third inning. First pitch to French is in there for called strike. Strike one. Swing and a miss, and French was out in front of that one. No balls, two strikes, no outs. French is in the hole right now. French playing third base for the Gold Coats. Swing and a miss, and Messiah French goes down on strikes. And Fran Japani just racking him up. Flapjack Noble to center field of steps, and he's neutral and fit. He's hitting 250 with a home run, five RBIs. Swing and a miss, strike one. Noble with about average uh, power, but he struggles to make contact. Swing and a miss, strike two, and now Noble finds himself in the hole 0-2. That's fouled off. Just gets enough to foul it off. So Noble will get another pitch. No balls, two strikes with an out. That's fouled off as well. Pushed out of play along the first baseline. Swing and a miss, and down goes Noble. Flapjack Noble down. Israel Herring, the starting pitcher, steps in. He's neutral fit, hitting 273. Not a bad hitting pitcher. He's got less than average power, less than average contact, and he struggles with speed. He's swing and a miss, and Herring was out in front of that one. No balls and a strike. That one's low ball one. One and one to the pitcher, Israel Herring. 
There's a shot to slam it. He's going to pick that up off the first bounce and make the throw to Sturdy Woodman for the third out. So once again, the Gold Coats go up, uh, go down one, two, three. We're heading into the bottom of the third. Frangipani, Hanley Dexterous, and Magic Moore. Dexterous one for one, Magic Moore 0 for one with a strikeout. Hearing at 28 pitches with a strikeout. Frangipani, the starting pitcher, is locked in and fit. So far, a very defensive game. One team's going to have to break it out and do some offense. We've got to see some pitches. Oh, she swings at that first one, pops up in the center field, waving that off. It's going to be Dunk Pineda. One up, yep. one down. Yes, sir. And in steps Hanley Dexter as he's neutral. Fit tough out utility player. One for one with a single today. One out, nobody on for Dexter. First pitch is way inside. Ball one. That catches the outside corner for called strike. One ball, one strike now. That one's popped up. Foul out of play along the first baseline. Dexter is behind in the count. One and two. That one's low. Evens the count. Two and two. There's a shot. And Delgado with a diving stop makes the throw to first for the second out. Base is empty for Magic Moore, center fielder stepping in. Boy, that was a, that was a great defensive play now. And that's got uh, Israel Herring locked in on his 35th pitch. He misses outside. Magic Moore's looking for the right pitch. Fans on their feet cheered him on. Follows that one back. Souvenir. Short of by uh, home plate. That one here oh. for a strike. One and two. Trying to put him away. Hard hit on the ground. A diving, tough dive to first base. But Delgado throws it up. Throws it not in time. And Magic Moore makes it on. Pete again. Two outs. And we get our, our, one, our one run. Our yeah. Run Buster our makes hit. the left fielder. Steps in. He's 0 for 1. Magic Moore at first base with two outs. First pitch to uh, Biggs is in there for a called strike. Strike one. And... Yeah. All right, so Magic Moore stole second base, so one ball, one strike to Buster Biggs. That one's outside, two and one now. Two outs with a runner at second base. No. That one's popped up in the center field. Flapjack. Oh, Doug Pineda's there <laughs> what to you make the him? catch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what his name is. Dunk Pineda. There you go. We're going into the top of the fourth. Still no score. Stephon Ballard 0 for 1. Dunk Pineda 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Pants Delgado 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Japani had 35 pitches with five strikeouts. Man, just people's got to get that offense. All right, but first got to play defense. Stephen Ballard, 354, five home runs, 18 RBIs. Good contact. It's a grounder to Bertha Banks who picks it up, whips it to first, just gets him. Wow, I had to feel that from end to end. I wasn't sure she was going to make it, but good to one pitch, one out. Dunk Pineda, it's dunk. It's not Al, it's Dunk. For, oh, 0 for 1 of the day. Misses that one inside. One know the count. Good contact hitter, Pineda. Uh, Chapani looking for the right signal from Monster. Finally gets it, winds up, throws it. Hard liner to Ham, Hammy Slammy dives for it, picks up, throws. A little wild to first, but he gets him. Uh, I think that's three pitches, two outs. Pants now, 0 for 1 on the day. Infield's going to play the guard the lines. Pani looks for her right pitch, throws it. Right in there for strike, on the count. She's going to ready up her 40th. She's locked in, facing the third baseman for the Gold Coats. Fouls that one back off behind the wall. 0-2, she's got him in a hole. It's a little grounder to Bertha Banks. Going to pick it up on her way to first. Chuck, great great defensive uh, inning there for the Newells. Yes, sir. So we're heading into the bottom of the fourth. Sturdy Woodman 0 for 1. Steve Monstor 0 for 1, and Bertha Banks 0 for 1. Herring at 42 pitches with a strikeout, giving up three hits. His ERA is at a 4.3. Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman's neutral and fit. He's 0 for 1 today, but he's hitting 371 on the season. Oh. Yeah, so hopefully he puts something together here. Those pitches outside, good eye. 1 0 the count, Sturdy Woodman. Oh, no. Hits a little liner to the diving shortstop who can't quite pick it up. And that's going to be a single for Sturdy Woodman. Hooper couldn't quite corral that one. And he looks All happy right. With himself. A leadoff single for Sturdy Woodman. In steps Steve Monstour. He's got power versus right-handed pitching. He's 0 for 1 today. Again, Monst uh, Woodman without does not have a lot of power. Woodman does not have a lot of speed. The first pitch to Monstour is low. <laughs> ball one. That one's high. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Steve Monstour. That's in there for a called strike. Two and one now. 
Ellens popped up foul in the foul territory along the third base side. It's going to drop harmlessly for a second strike. Two and two now to Steve Monstor. Inside. Ellens inside ball three. Three balls and two strikes. No, Steve. Ellens popped up. It's ball four. <laughs> into shallow left field, the shortstop. Hooper is there to make the catch for the first out. So one down and in steps Bertha Banks. Steve shouldn't have swung at that one. He would have been on free, two on. Bertha Banks, no, for one. She's calm. The crowd's cheered up. Oh, no. She gets an easy pop fly. That's going to be caught in shallow center. Hooper again. And after putting one on, the Beagles make two quick outs. Billy the Boink, the right fielder, neutral, and Fiddy favors the high pitch. He's one for with a single. Sturdy Woodman still standing at first base. First pitch to LeBoink is in there for Colt. Strike, strike one. Allen's outside, ball one. One ball and one strike now. There's a smash. That's going to get into the gap between left and center, and Sturdy Woodman's coming around, and he's going to keep going. He's going to score easily yes. on a double by Lily, uh, Billy LeBoink to left center field, so the Fuels take the lead one to nothing. Hey, it's been a little while. <laughs> Ham slam us now. I thought we were going to strand everybody. Hammy is 0 for 1. That one goes way high. Slow runner at second base, but in scoring position. Ham reaches out. Oh. It's a liner right in the glove to Elgato in the side. Freaking power swing, too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know. Don't use it. It doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going into the fifth inning. It's uh, 1 to nothing, B Wolves. Haley Hooper 0 for 1, Peyton Nielsen 0 for 1 with a strikeout, Jacques off then 0 for 1. Haley Hooper, the right fielder, is locked in and fits. She's got power versus right-handed pitching. She's 0 for 1 today. She is indeed. The Hooper. Hooper, the shortstop. Fouls the first pitch off into the stands along the third baseline. Strike one. Swing and a miss. Late swing for Hooper. Now she finds herself in the hole. No balls, two strikes with no outs. There's a roller to Dexteros. He's going to pick it up, and he's going to make the throw to first base for the first out. One down, and in steps the left fielder, Peyton Nielsen. He's 0 for 1 today. Nielsen hitting 127 on the season. First pitch, Nielsen takes for called strike. Strike one. Swing and a miss, and now Nielsen's in the hole 0 and 2. Allen's low ball one. One ball, two strikes with one out. Base is empty for Peyton Nielsen in the top of the fifth. He gets enough of that to push that foul along the third baseline. He'll get another pitch. Oh, that's inside. inside. That evens the count at two and two. Japani going to deliver her 50th pitch inside. for a ball. Ball three. Count is full. Three balls, two strikes. There's a roller. Gets past Japani. Dexteros will pick it up, make the throw to Woodman for the second out. So two up, two down, and in steps the tense catcher Jacques Oftan. He's got power versus right-handed pitching, but he's 0 for 1 today. Oftan finds the bases empty. There's a shot to Bertha Banks. She'll pick that up, double pump, make the throw across the field to Sturdy Woodman at first base for the third out. So we're going to head into the bottom of the fifth. B Wolves won, Gold Coats nothing. Fran Japani 0 for 1, Hanley Dexterous 1 for 2, and Magic Moore hearing herring at 56 pitches with a strikeout, giving up 5 hits. Fran Japani locked in and fit 0 for 1 today with an RBI. She's got no batting average but an RBI. Must have hit a sacrifice or, or something. First pitch is up the middle into center field. That's going to be a clean single for Fran Japani. So another leadoff single for the B Wolves. All right, people, so you get that offense going. They got to keep getting more offense because. You know the Gold Coats are only one home run away from tying this thing up. Handy Dex, one for two to single. He's got a slower than average runner at first base in Fran Japani, not much of a stealer. First pitch outside strike. One safety off now for Handy Dex. Second pitch outside. Good patience for even at one apiece. 60th pitch by Herring right now. Misses high and inside. Ball two, two and one. Handy a great, great patient batter. Three and one now. Hitter's pitch. Herring a little nervous to throw. Ooh, he goes right at him. Handy's a little late on that one. Three and two, he's a tough out, full count. Ball four walks him. Great patience by a veteran batter. And the Eagles now got two on with no outs, Pete. Yes, sir. Magic one of the center fielders locked in and fit. He's one for two today. As my partner said, bases, uh, runners at first and second with no outs. Magic war bunts foul or called strike. Strike one. 
Moore offers the bunt again, but pulls back. One ball, one strike. That one's high ball, two. Two balls and a strike. And he lays the bunt down here. He's going to pick it up, make the throw to first for the first out. One down, and in steps Buster Biggs, the left fielder. Right, they advance the runners. They got two runners in scoring position for Buster Biggs. The pressure's up. The fans are cheering. An outfield single gets him two more. First one's there for a strike. Oh, one the count. Bottom of the fifth. Oh, that one makes the outside corner quickly. Buster Biggs is in the hole. Ball, good patience. Not easy to not swing after two strikes. One and two the count to Buster Biggs. No, that one misses inside ball too. Good patience, Buster Biggs. Oh, oh no. but he swings at a bad one outside and goes down fanning. <laughs> oh, Buster. <laughs> Sturdy Woodman, the first baseman, locked in at fit. He's one for two with a single. Runners at second and third with two outs now. First pitch to Woodman is low, ball one. Oh. Allen's rocked foul along the, th uh, fir uh, the first baseline, out of play. Inside ball two, two balls and a strike to Sturdy Woodman. That's ball three, three balls and a strike to Sturdy Woodman. That's outside ball four, and he walks the bases loaded. Bases loaded in steps Steve Monstour, the catcher. Oh man, Steve Monstour could taste a grand slam. But they're going to pull Israel Herring, the starter. They're going to bring in the reliever already at, at the fifth inning. Uh, the B-plus ranked Wax Cantu, the right, the relief pitcher number 21. He's known mostly for his accuracy. He's very accurate. He's got good junk. He doesn't throw very hard, though, so you got time to react. He's mostly rested. He's got a four-finger, and he mixes things up with a slider and a curveball. The pressure's way up here. It's a double switch. They're going to bring, also going to be taking out the catcher, Jacques off 10, B-plus ranked, uh, a little bit tense today. So Jacques's going to grab some bench. They're going to bring in Chevelle Stewart. Chevelle used to used to be the starting catcher for this team for a long time. He maybe still is. He's got no errors on the season. He's in 367 with a home run, and he's got a real good arm. He's got good contact against left-handers. So you'll see him, new pitcher, new catcher for Gold Coast, a new duo. Bases loaded, two outs. Nope. Ball one one other. good good way to pull back, Steve. Oh, what bend on that one makes it way back. Can't read it at one apiece. Can't do. Oh, there's a liner. It's on the ground. Delgado at second and throws him out at third. Good defense by the Gold Coast. So we're heading into the top of the sixth. It's still B Wolves one, Gold Coast nothing. Messiah French 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Flapjack Noble 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And Chevelle Stewart's first at bat. Japan Japan had 52 pitches with five strikeouts. Number 46. All right. Number 46. Fran Giapani on fire. Hurry area is below two. Bending pitch makes it in for a strike. I won the count. Messiah front. Safety off. Four home runs. 18 yard guys. Good contact hitter. Not a ton of power. He doesn't chase that one upstairs. So we're even at one apiece. Number 40 getting ready to throw our 55th pitch here in the top of the sixth. She does outside corner. Wondering if French is going to swing at anything. She'll try and get him to chase here. One and two. He does. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Fran Japani. I don't know. How many Ks you got now, Pete? The first baseman. Six. Ah. Six. Here's Flapjack. This is, this is who Pete wanted to be playing center field. Instead, he's playing first base. <laughs> he's mostly a power hitter. Uh, contact. Good speed. 245. He's trying to get RBI number six. One home run, like we said earlier, would tie this ball game up. So the B-Wolves got to keep playing the defense. Still no hitter. For Frangipani. First one misses ball one. Second one's a little roller to the mound. Frangipani's going to pick that up and keep the no hitter by tossing him out at first base. She ran like lightning, Pete. She does not want to give this up. Chevelle Stewart contact against left hander. 367, one home run, eight RBIs. Just got in the game in the uh, in the top of the inning there, the bottom of the last inning. First at bat. First one misses inside ball one. We're going to count Chevelle Stewart. Good power hitter. For the gold coats. Fooled on that one. Swing and miss way early. Outfit's going to fade back, though, just in case. So if he doesn't make contact, it goes far. Another strike on the low inside corner. One and two. Two outs. One more to go. Can she do it? Pops that one up in the center field. Magic Moore's going to have to run up on it. And he makes that grab and keeps it a no hitter, Pete. All right. So we're going to head into the bottom of the six. Still one to nothing. B Wolves. Bertha Banks 0 for 2. Billy LeBoy 2 for 2 with a double ham slam. It's 0 for 2. Can't do it three, through three pitches and uh, has an ERA of 4.99. So Bertha Banks neutral and fit. She's 0 for 2 today, but she's hitting 259 on the season with two home runs, 12 RBIs. First pitch to Banks. 
in there for called strike strike one there's a smash Ooh, just gonna curve foul along the first baseline no balls two strikes to banks now that one's popped up into shallow right field the first baseman ranges out and noble is able to make the catch for the first out one down oh. billy the boy now two for two the double single and rbi uh, Cantu's got some, it's hard to read on some of his pitches. They really make some movement. That one makes him for a strike on the count. His eighth pitch, a little high, but that's where Billy likes him. It's deep to center field, the crowd cheering, but it's going to be caught at the warning track by Dunk Tornado. Two down. Ham slam is neutral and fit 0 for 2 today. Bases empty, two outs, bottom of the sixth. Slamis fouls the first pitch off, strike one. That one's low ball one. One ball, one strike to Ham Slamis. That catches the outside corner for called second. One and two now. There's a roller to Pants Delgado at second base. He'll make the throw to Flapjack Noble for the third out. So we're going to head into the top of the seventh. Gold Coach, no runs, no hits, no errors. B-Wolves, one run, six hits, no errors. Stefan Ballard, 0 for 2. Dunk Pineda, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Pants Delgado, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Japan had 62 pitches with six strikeouts. Stephon Ballard, the right fielder's neutral, and Fitty's 0 for 2 today. Fran Japani is on fire and fit, throwing her 63rd pitch. It's popped up into foul territory. Buster Biggs is there to make the catch for the first out. One down and in steps Dunk Pineda, the center fielder. It's neutral and fit 0 for 2 today. Again, good defense and good pitching from the B Wolves so far today. Just still no offense. That pitch is low, ball one. One ball, no strikes to Pineda. That one's fouled straight back. That'll even the count at one and one. That one's inside, ball two. Two balls and a strike to Dunk Pineda, the goal coach center fielder. That one's fouled off along the first baseline. Two and two, Japani gonna throw her 68th pitch to Dunk Pineda. Swing and a miss, she gets Pineda. That'll be seven Ks for Fran Japani. And in steps pa Pants Delgado, the second baseman. He's neutral and fit. He's 0 for 2 today. Delgado finds the bases empty in the top of the seventh with two outs as he takes to the box. He fouls the first pitch off. Strike one. That one's outside ball one. One ball, one strike now to Pants Delgado. That one's fouled straight back. And now Delgado's behind in the count. One and two. Ooh, check this swing. And you call it inside. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. That one's in the dirt. Again, Delgado had to hold up. Full count, three and two to Pants Delgado, the goal coach second baseman. That's ripped into center field. And oh, oh it's off the top of the wall in center field. And it looked like traveled 417 feet. That's a sixth home run, a 26th RBI of the season, and the game is tied up. And it was over Magic Moore's head. It looked like it was going to fall short of the wall, so he dove to try and make the catch, and it just clips the top of the wall. Once, once again, it was a missed pitch to slider and right over the plate. Haley Hooper, the shortstop, is in there. Two quick strikes against Hooper. Japani going right after her. There's a roller to... Dexterous, he's going to pick it up and make the throw to Woodman for the third out. So we're going to head into the bottom of the seventh, all knotted up at one. Fran Japani one for two. Hanley Dexterous, one for two with a walk. And Magic Moore, one for two with a strikeout. Wax Kentu has thrown 12 pitches so far. Fran Japani's locked in and fit. One for two with a single. She's got a batting average of .056. Seems like the third inning in a row Japani started off, didn't it? That one bends way back in, makes it in for a strike. Oh, and the count to Japani. Second one, oh, two quick strikes. On. He's got her in a hole. He's going right for her. Fouls that one back off the net. Defensive swinging. Oh, and two pressure up. Fouls that one back off the net as well. Oh, and two. She's going to get the pinch count up. Number 17 by Cantu. Up high, she fouls back off the net. Still 0 oh, and two. Bender makes it in. Roller to second base. Delgado picks it up. Throws over to Noble at first. One down. And in steps Hanley Dexterous to shortstop. He's neutral. If it one for two with a single and a walk today. One out with the bases empty for Dexterous. First pitch is inside. Ball one. 
Allen's low ball two, two balls and no strikes. That catches the inside corner for a called strike. Two and one now to Dexteris. There's a shot right up the middle into center field for a clean single. So one on with one out. And in steps Magic Moore. Nice, and he's locked in. He's one for two with a single. He's got a fast one at first base with one out and the pressure way up. Cantu's keeping an eye on him. Oh, a late swing foul ball third baseline souvenir. There goes Hanley for second base. The throw not in time. Hanley's way there. 0-2 oh to Magic Moore. Hanley in scoring position. Late swing. That's a second strikeout by Magic Moore today. In steps Buster Biggs. He's neutral and fit. 0 oh for 3 today. Hitting 268 on the season. Runner at second base with two outs. Buster Biggs is going to take a seat, and in comes Benny Ballmer. Benny Ballmer with a 185 batting average, one home run, six RBIs. He doesn't have a whole lot of power. He does struggles to make contact, but he's got a little bit less than average speed. So. And, he's, and he's not two over outs, three. <laughs> two outs, for, uh, runner at second base. There's a shot. That's going to get into left field, and here comes Dexteris, and he's yes! going to score to make it two to one. Way to go, Benny Balma. Who to thunk? <laughs> you bring it. Now it comes to Sturdy Woodman, one for two. Slow run at first base. Beagles recapture the lead. Sturdy's right the right spot, but he was just a little early on that one. Pose a foul, first base line, the one. Can't two is hard. To, it's hard to track that ball. One that one misses. One a piece now. That one inside oh, corner off his hands. Delgado's gonna throw the first for the third out. All right, so we're going into the top of the eighth. It's uh, B-Wolves 2, Gold Coats 1. Peyton Nielsen 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Wax Cantu's first at bat, and Messiah French 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Chapani had 77 pitches with seven strikeouts. Gave up one hit. Peyton Nielsen 0 for 2, 125. Unfortunately, that one hit was, was a home run. Now in left field, Benny Balmer replacing the 0 for 3 um, Buster Biggs. Rangipani looking for the right call. Gets and throws. Check swing. is in there for a strike. Only the count. Pressure up now on top of the eighth. Goldcoat's going to try and push and get this game tied up again. Third ball. Foul ball. Third baseline. Souvenir. For a lucky fan. 0-2. Oh Fans clapping on Japani, Hoping she puts them away. Inside corner. Foul ball. That's deep into the corner. LeBoink wasn't going to be able to get there. Still 0-2 oh to Peyton Nielsen. Reaches out. Fouls that one off the wall. Still 0-2, 82nd pitch by Japani. Inside corner jams and fouls it off the net. Cannot get past him, won't get past him. Oh, oh puts that one up near his hands. Ball, one and two the count. Is she gonna come low and away now? <laughs> one and two, there she does, check that, check swing strike three. Way to go, friend, Jip, the Jipper. <laughs> Ani. Wax can too now, pitching great, they're gonna pull him. Wow, he's been pitching great. As a reliever, they're going to pull him out. They're going to bring in Guadalupe Pennington for some offense. A B-plus ranked shortstop. Number 36, shown there diving for a grab. She's a little tense recently. She's hitting 324, though, with two home runs, 17 RBIs. So maybe the utility player could do something, even, <clears throat> even not at 100%. Grand Japan is going to throw her 85th pitch to Guadalupe Pennington and see what happens. Swing and a miss, strike one. That's a good start. One on the count. Japani going for number two. Low and inside. Pennington does not chase. Or even if it won a piece. Japani closing in on 90 pitches here in the top of the eighth. That one misses. Oh. Two and one the count. To the tenth, Guadalupe Pennington. Breaking pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Two and two with one out. Swing and a miss. Strike three. It's another K by Japani. And now the pinch hit didn't seem like such a great idea. Comes Messiah French 0 for 2. Everyone on this team's 0 for except for what's his name? Uh, good contact hitter, Messiah French. One of the better ones. Check swing strike one. The infield's gonna guard the lines just in case. He hits one down the sides. One of those good contact hitters. He hits a roller back to the wall. 0 and 2. Fouls that one back off the net. 93rd pitch by Japani coming up. So far, not not running red on anything. Fouls that one back off the wall. Still 0-2. She can't get that third strike on Messiah French. What's she going to do? Oh, he anticipates a two, the two-strike fastball. It's a little high. He checked. 
the first ball. Now one and two the count to French. There it is, inside corner. He didn't like the call. There's the third K by Japani. Great day. <laughs> Chucks the bat. <laughs> yes, sir. So they're going to pull Guadalupe Penny, Pennington, the pinch hitter. And in comes Binky Stevens, the relief pitcher. Stevens with a 3.91 ERA, 1.39 whip, 19 strikeouts. He's neutral and fit. He's got about average velocity, but he does not have very good junk. And he's got uh, a good accuracy. He's almost fully rested. He's got a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, and a fork ball. So as we go into the bottom of the eighth, B-Wolves winning, to, uh, leading 2-1. to one. Steve Monstor, 0 for 3. Bertha Banks, 0 for 3. Billy LeBoing, 2 for 3 with a double. Binky Stevens with uh, that 3.91 ERA going to take the bump. Try to hold the B-Wolves here. Steve Monstor, the catcher, neutral fit. Power versus right-handed pitching, but he's 0 for 3 today. First pitch from Stevens is a roller to Messiah French at third base. He's going to make the throw to Flapjack Double at first for the first out. So one one pitch, one out. Yeah, Steve was looking for that one on the inside, and he got it. Bertha Banks now looking a little tense. 257. This one's ready for a strike. Oh, and the Beatles want to add one more. They don't want to go extra innings. Ah. Swing and a miss, strike two. Pressure up. Strike Outside corner, three pitch strikeout. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Billy Boink, the right fielder, stepping in. Hitting 395. Favors the high pitch. Rips that one foul along the third baseline. Strike one. Now there's a roller. That's going to get into center field for a clean single. And Billy LeBoink is on base, I think, for the third time today, Tom. Billy LeBoink has got to be the best right fielder in the league this season. <laughs> Ham Slamis, ought for three. Come on, Hammy. Pressure way up. A two-run home run would really end this game off nicely. That one's a little high. One no the count. Two outs. Top of the eighth. Beavers have one run lead. There's two quick balls. Two no good patience, Hammy. That one's his pitch. He hits it hard and past the mound into center field. That's going to be another clean single by the Beavers. They got two outs, but they got two on. In steps Fran Chapani. She's on fire and fit. One for three with a single. Runners at first and second with two outs. Binky Stevens throwing his tenth pitch here in the bottom of the eighth. First pitch to. Oh. Fran Japani is lifted into left field. The left fielder is under it. Nailson will make the catch for the third out. So we're going to head into the top of the ninth. Gold Coats one run on one hit. B Wolves two runs on 10 hits. Flapjack Noble 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Chevelle Stewart 0 for 1. And Stefan Ballard 0 for 3. Japani at 95 pitches with 10 strikeouts, giving up a hit. Her ERA is down to a 1.8. Flapjack Noble, the center fielder, is neutral and fit. He's 0 for 2 today. Antonio Noble's going to get pulled here for Montonio Levo. Levo, the pinch hitting first baseman, is hitting 292. He's got six home runs, 21 RBIs. He's neutral and fit. He's got better than average power, better than average contact, but he does not have a lot of speed on the base pass. So Fran Giapani on fire and fit throw on her 96th pitch to Montonio Levo. That one's outside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. That's in there for a called strike, and the count is evened up. One and one now. That one's flared into the stands along the third baseline. Strike two. One ball, two strikes to Montonio Levo. There's a roller that Dexteris is going to come up on, make the catch, and throw to first to retire Levo. One down, and in step Chevelle Stewart, the catcher. He's neutral and fit. He's 0 for 1 today. One out, nobody on. And Japani on fire at 99, make it 100 pitches right there for a cold strike. No balls in a strike to Chevelle Stewart, the catcher. That's in there for called second strike. And now Chevelle Stewart's in the hole. No balls, two strikes with one out. Swing and a miss, and Chevelle Stewart goes down on strikes. Makes it 11 Ks for Japani on the day. Stefan Ballard, the right fielder, is neutral if it. He's 0 for 3 today, Ballard. The Gold Coat right fielder 0 for 3 on the day. Takes the first pitch low, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Japani at 103, make it 104 pitches. That's in there for called strike, strike one. The count is now even. One ball, one strike with two outs. Swing and a miss by Ballard. And he's behind in the count, one and two. Swing and a miss. Oh, and it was a drop third strike, but Monstero make the throw to Woodman at, third, at first. For the third out, and that'll go down as a strikeout. So 12 on the day for Fran Giapani. The B-Wolves will win this one, Tom. Yes. <laughs> it's been a while. Holy cow. You know, and there was a, 
a chance in the, la in the bottom of that last inning where uh, the D-Wolves could have, you know, dropped Japani, but she's such a good hitting pitcher. I wanted to let her hit and then go the call game, which she got. I think it's her third call game of the season. I think she leads the league in called games. And there's how it looks right then. It was a one-hitter, Pete, a one-hitter. Yeah, and the, unfortunately that one hit what I was almost, able to get out. Almost the first no hitter we've ever seen. And yep. she missed just one she missed a slider. That slider ended up right in the middle. And it barely it just skipped off the top of the wall. I mean, just so it goes out. Yeah, so the Beebles score in the fourth inning. The Gold Coast tied up in the seventh. Beebles, to their credit, answered quickly. Still, not a big offensive day for the Beatles. They get two runs on ten hits to the Gold Coats, one run on one hit. But it was enough to carry the game. On the Gold Coats, Ballard 0 for 4. Pineda 0 for 4. Pants Delgado, the only one who gets the hit. 1 for 3 with one run. It's a home run, RBI. He also strikes out at one point. Hooper 0 for 3. Nielsen 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Off 10 0 for... Uh, Pennington 0-4 with a strikeout. French 0-3 with three strikeouts. Struck out every time he came up. Noble 0-2 with one strikeout. Levo 0 for one. Herring 0-1. Stewart 0-2. The Beagles, the Frangipani just killed him. Killed him. Yeah, she had their number today. For the uh, Beagles, um, Hanley Vexteris goes two for three, scores a run, and he walked once. So he was on base three times today. Uh, Magic Moore, 1 for 3 with 2 strikeouts. Buster Biggs, 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Uh, Benny Balmer, 1 for 1 with an RBI. Comes up with a big hit in the, I think it was the 8th, the 7th. It was the 7th. He brought home the game uh, winner. Yeah, he'll winning, yeah, he'll the be game one winner. of the game players of the game. Sturdy Woodman, 1 for 3. Scored a run and uh, walked once. So he was on base twice. Steve Montstewer goes 0 for 4. Uh Bertha Banks, 0 for 4 with a strikeout. Billy LeBoyne, 3 for 4 with an RBI. Wow, Billy. Uh, Ham Slamis, 1 for 4. And Fran Giapani, 1 for 4. Yes, I'm, I'm guessing, before they do the Stars of the Game, I'm guessing the Stars of the Game is going to go Fran Giapani, uh, yeah, Pants Delgado, and then uh, Benny Ballman. That's my guess. So anyway, pitching, uh, Israel Herring comes out, throws 4.2 innings, gets up 6 hits. Not terrible, 1 earned run. Walks two batters, gets two strikeouts. His ERA is at a 4-3-4. He's 1-1-0 one, one, on the season. West Cantu comes out, goes 2.1 innings, gives up only two hits. One of them an earned run, gets a strikeout. Uh, really a, a good outing for him. Unfortunately, he gets saddled with that loss. His ERA is at 4.96. He's now five, still 5-3, five and three, though. Still a winning record for the Gold Coats. And finishing things off, Binky Stevens comes in, throws an inning, gives up two hits, uh, strikes out one batter. Uh, her, his ERA uh, goes to three seven five four and zero on the season. Some good records there by the Gold Coats. Yes, sir. And then over here for the B Wolves, Fran Japani will get the win. She pitched all nine innings, only gave up one hit, but that hit equaled an earned run. She did rack up twelve strikeouts. She gave up the one home run. Her ERA has dropped to one point seven seven, and her record will improve to four wins and two losses. Three stars of the game, Fran Japani, number one, the starting pitcher. She went nine innings, gave up a hit, an earned run, and had 12 Ks on the day. Wow, yeah, she's. I think she's second place again in, in strikeouts. What a, what a great outing for Fran Japani. Just too bad she just missed by one pitch, you know? The, the, yeah. But another call game, Billy LeBoink, uh, surprisingly, gets second star of the game, B minus rank. I mean, not entirely surprised. He goes three for four, gets a double and an RBI. What a, what a great season this 41 year old right fielders have yes sir and then the third star of the game hanley dexter is the superstar shortstop he goes two for three scores a run and has two stolen bases yeah, that's a good day tommy g had five hits two rbis one great catch two two stolen bases seven strikeouts for a contribution of 54 percent pj with five hits one stolen base five strikeouts and a contribution of 46 percent Got that win. Once again, though, still no long balls by the Beebles. No. But they broke, they broke, the, they snapped the streak, at least, and they, and they put themselves back in the win column. And at least for today, after this game, with these standings, they're, they're solo top first place, 1916. Yep. 
Half then, game lead over the water bullets and the herbivores. Now you look at those the wild card. I'll start the Pioneer Conference right now. If it ends today, the Freebooters, the Outlaws, and the Burners with the wild card going to the Platypine. Again, I, I don't know if that's going to change before the end of the season. It's possible you know the wild pigs or the moose could creep up there, um, but they'd have to see quite a quite a turnaround. Right now, that looks almost locked up. Yeah, and I was just looking at, you look at the uh, run differential of the teams in the Pioneer Conference, and and the lowest run differential in the Pioneer Conference is still better than the best run yeah. differential in the Explorer Conference. Just looking at that, you would have to think, at this point, you could probably say that the uh, the uh, uh, the, the champions are going to come from the Pioneer Conference, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. <laughs> Over in the Explorer Conference, the Gold Coast Saw Teeth and B-Wolves, if the uh, season ended today, would be guaranteed a spot. And the Heaters would take the wild card. Uh, they have a 20-15 and 15 record and a plus-18 run differential. But again, the Overdogs, Water Bullets, and Herbisaurs all kind of breathing down their necks. And not too far behind them, the Wide Loads, uh, mm -hmm. speaking of Alora Franco, the Wide Loads at two games out. Um yeah, it's not as, as clear cut. Two games out for the wide loads. Then you got the Jackson, the Moonstars, they're two and a half. The Sirloins at three. The Warblers at four. And then really the front runners and the Nemesis would would need a miracle. Yeah. But uh, Warblers just being four games out, we still got uh, we still got some games to play here. Could yeah, could you could have uh, you could have got New nine games there. left. Yeah, well, nine games left, and and so the, you can't count the uh, Warblers out. How about how about those Oakland fans though? They got both teams in first place. <laughs> Outlaws and the Gold Coats. It's uh, Sakura Hills is, is loving the baseball this season. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. Well, we'll have 11 other games uh, that will come up eventually. What's our next game? Let's see our, schedule, our schedule. The Wild Pigs. We'll be playing Ooh. the Wild Pigs next. We're going the Big Apple again. Out there to, to fit. Yeah, that's, I like playing Apple Field. The Moose are going to visit the Wild Pigs first. Um... So yeah, this is going to be this will be good to see New York. Let's see if I go to. There's a few things happening around the league. We'll cover some news here before it gets out. Hito Moonshot. We got starred. His uh, his ass, he dropped his asking salary from 19.8 down to 19.2. Still a little rich for our blood. Yep. Oh, um, hold on. Hito Moonshot, Bull Hackett. Bull Hackett is another person that we're keeping an eye on. He's a 33-year-old uh, relief pitcher. He's asking $6,700,000. He's dropped his price from 7.2 to 6.7. So. so there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, up from that, we got a move here or a change. Vinny Vortex. How about that? Vinny Vortex, a fender crocodile's coach, replaced by Angela Sanchez. Uh, Sanchez, I thought, I thought she used to play for the Crocs. But anyway... Um, Vinny Vortex is the 38-year-old right fielder, outfielder, uh, B-ranked, known mostly for his speed, but he's also got good connectivity. Um, he was making $7.8 million a year. He will no longer be a Houston Crocodile. Instead, Angela Sanchez is going to be a C-plus ranked 35-year-old right field first base outfielder. She's got a little more range there. She's got more power, but less connectivity and less speed, also less fielding. So she's not a great fielder, but she's got a 97 arm. So they're bringing her mostly in for a little bit of power, it looks like, and to save some money. She's going to make $2.3 million to wear the Crocodiles jersey. Kent Rathers, well, the relief, uh, the starting pitcher, relief pitcher, 34-year-old. Um, he was asking $6.6 .6 million, but he's dropped his price and will be happy to take 6.1 as long as he can catch on with the team before the season lets out. We hope Kent will. We, we do. Hammer Longball is lowered his asking salary from 11.3 down to 11.1 million. I would imagine when he comes down under 11, maybe this next game, Hammer might find a home. In Phoenix. <laughs> Larry Cunningham, the 26 year old starting pitcher, relief pitcher. He's uh, B ranked. He was previously asking 6.8 million, but he'll be happy to take 6.6 .6 as long as he can play ball somewhere. I'd be happy to take five. No one's calling. <laughs> oh, there's that. Phones are dead. It looks oh. like everybody's looking to uh, drop some some uh, asking salary just to just to be able to get on somewhere and play. I'm telling you. Well, all right. Well, I guess we'll wrap things up. Finally, a win for the home crowd today. 
Uh, so it's good to be home in Phoenix. We're going to get on a plane and head back to the Big Apple, New York City. We're going to face those wily wild pigs. Um, and uh, until then, this is Tommy G. And this is PJ. And we're saying, get out of here.